time until he got involved in this football game. Hayward hands it off to Anthony Davis, met by Nico Kudovides, the leader of that defense, if not with his performance, then certainly vocally. The Purdue defense all season long has been the backbone of this team. Second in rush defense, fifth in total defense, ranking nationally in several categories. And he is, it is laced with seniors that have been producing for four years now for Brock's back. The best in the Big Ten prevails on the road against oh. Wisconsin. Purdue oh. beats Ooh. Wisconsin. Oh. How, how can you like Ooh. Wisconsin? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. Just the tell booze, the booze. Hey. Oh, no. Here, here, here comes Bucky. Here he comes. Here comes Bucky Badger. Here he comes. Kibasa. Oh, Bucky oh. with the ball. Oh. Here, open his help him out there. Help here, him out give there. me that kielbasa. I get it here, in there. Help him out. No, you're missing the mouth, Lee. Up higher. There you go. Give Bucky the bratwurst. Here you go. So it's a split decision. We thank you for watching. We've had a great time here. We are going to kick it right inside. Uh, Mark and Bob for kickoff here. The Badgers and the Boilermakers enjoy the football game. We'll see you back here later on from Madison. Lee, you've made a mess. All right, Chris, tell Lee to get us a couple of those brats, too, and give that head of Bucky back. Get yourselves a seat on the side lines here at Camp Randall Stadium as the autumnal Hughes cascade down on Madison Wisconsin homecoming week where the past meets up with the present both with an eye on the future ESPN college football presents the 73rd meeting all time between number 15 Purdue and number 12 Wisconsin a couple of crews that always are pivotal and prominent in the Big Ten Conference race and speaking of which there are still three teams undefeated in Big Ten play all three in action today Michigan State playing at Minnesota that game on ESPN 2 Bob Davey this race is so wide open Mark it's early in the Big Ten race but this is a huge football game the winner will remain unbeaten in the Big Ten and be in great shape that both these teams face challenges today for first down and ten from the 24 for Sorgi on the play fake going up top for Lee Evans and it's picked off by Jacques Reeves on the first play of the ball game. They tried to hit them early, and it backfired. Lee Evans last week went 55 minutes without a catch in the Ohio State game, then had a big 79-yard completion. Here, right off the bat, they go up the top to Lee Evans. The ball poorly thrown by Jim Sorgi, and Jacques Reeves comes up with the interception on the first possession of the game, Mark. That is their 12th interception as a team defense this season. Reeves with his second of the year. And after sitting so long. Second down, here's the counter. Davis stopped up right near the line of scrimmage. This is the number two rush defense in the country. The line of scrimmage. This is the number two rush defense in the country. The line of scrimmage. This is the number two rush defense in the country. Nico Kudovides, 6'3 senior, the team's leading tackler, flanked by Johnson and Gardner. And a secondary, Reeves and Rogers, a couple of guys that can run. Schweigert, the All-American free safety, joined by a hard-hitting freshman in Pollard. Well, guys, the Purdue defensive coordinator, Brock Spack, says they coach turnovers all year long. They start out in spring ball, they go through two-a-days, and then they work on it every single day in practice. He said what they try to do is when they're playing zone coverage, compete for the ball, get in there and get the interception. He also says they do ball disruption videos every week, show how the other team has lost balls, and try to duplicate that in their own game. Seems like it's paying off pretty well for Purdue today. It certainly is. Right now in good field position again out at the 42-yard line. First down and 10. Badgers near midfield. Sorgi under heat and brought down to the 46-yard line by Schweigert. Into well, he pulled that cancer card out a little early. They still have four games before the playoffs, but that coach has a tough, tough job now coaching that ball club. Oh, they got to run the table. Here's Jim Leonard on the return. Out near midfield at the 48-yard line. A change that took place after that. Second down and 12. Sorgi sacked back at the 43-yard line by Sean Phillips. Here's what you... Well, Sorgi uh, with a big heart and a very forgiving heart. Third down and long. Looking up top. And he's sacked back at the 38-yard line by Sean Phillips. His second sack of the ball game. Mark, going back to that Jim Sorgi, Robert Reynolds.
Kelly Butler, a big, talented guy. Mark, I recruited this kid as a basketball player. He was actually a basketball player out of high school, about six foot seven, six foot eight. Will be an NFL player. Really competed that time against Alex Lewis. A guy that's playing well today is Kelly Butler. Right here, the big offensive tackle is going to show his athleticism, Mark 71, and hopefully he'll come back in our screen. We didn't get a chance to see it, but Kelly Butler at six foot eight out there leading that sweep. Get those former basketball players, put a little weight on them, make them a tight end or offensive lineman, right? Fishing line. Right. Almost two to one. Davis. Davis. Davis got the first down just beyond the 25. Schweiger made the tackle for the Boilermaker. Let's go down to Holly. First Two knee surgeries. Now back as good as before. First down and 10. Sorgi looking at Evans. He wanted the out and up. But he sacked back at the 35-yard line with 2.28 to go in the half. The fourth sack of the day for Purdue. It's jerk. I'm in, I'm in your lab, learning. Second and 12. Sorgi. Pass complete to Owen Daniels. And it's loose. Purdue's got it. Dante Farrell. And the Boilermakers have their third turnover of the ball game. Purdue ball in Wisconsin territory. Owen Daniels, the converted quarterback. The ball is stripped out, the, out of there by Landon Johnson. We're going to get another look at it right here. Mark, that football definitely came out. Landon Johnson stripped the football. Dante Farrell comes up with the recovery. Dante Farrell, a young guy, as long as they don't fall any farther behind. Trailing by just four right now on third down and one. Stuart Schwager coming on the strong safety blitz, Mark. Here he comes. Picked up by Davis. Incomplete. And no flag on the ball. You know what? Your quarterback goes 26 to 31. Your defense forces turnovers. Might be a little bit uneasy if you're Purdue, not having a bigger lead than they do right now. We have all of these teams in the Big Ten right now that have a legitimate shot at winning the conference championship. The magnificent seven, if you will. Only three of them undefeated, and at least one of the unbeatens will fall at the end of our game between the Badgers and the Boilermakers. Spartans have things in hand right now. Yeah, I think if you look at that full screen right there, it says it all. I mean, I don't know of any other co uh, conference in college football right now that has so many teams with a legitimate shot at playing for their conference championship. I think that's the whole key. If you look at the Big Ten, not all the teams play each other. Purdue, certainly a team that could play for the championship, and Michigan State easily has Minnesota in hand right now. Those two teams, I think, are playing the best of the Big Ten. They don't play. You got to get a 12th team. You got to settle it on the field. I don't want any more Iowa, Ohio State situations. <laughs> Michigan State, Mark, has to play Purdue if they're going to say they're winning the Big Ten championship. That they was outstanding. To. Yeah, that was outstanding. I totally agree with you. And welcome back to Madison on Homecoming. Just a great scene here, a sea of red, the homecoming king of green riding around in a big red viper. <laughs> and at halftime, it's the visiting Boilermakers on top. Chris Lee and Kirk here. Hey, very strong start by Kyle Orton, the Purdue quarterback. I think Joe Tiller kind of lulled us to sleep. He said it was going to be old-fashioned field possession. Nope, 26 of 31 for Orton. He's now gone 33 quarters without throwing an interception. Did have the one fumble return for a touchdown. Well, I, you're right. I, I think coming into this game, we expected Purdue with his balance. Last week, they dominated uh, Penn State late in the game with a ball control offense, running the football. But Wisconsin's defense is dictating what Purdue's doing on offense because they're sitting back, six defensive backs. Purdue's spreading it all over the place. I'd, say, I'd love to see how many quick slants Orton is hit in the first half. Wisconsin's got to make some kind of adjustments because not only is he throwing the football, they're eating the clock. I think it's 20 to 10 at time, yeah. of, uh, time of possession. But I you going to hold by your predictions? Absolutely. Oh, wait, you think we're going to change now? <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. Uh -uh. I, I, I'm just I, Wisconsin wins 24-21. 24-21? Fourth quarter, they score a lot of points. 
Fourth quarter. You you always say that Purdue must have a lead in this game in the fourth quarter. By at least 14 points because Wisconsin's going to come back. Lee had 14. a great comment in the first half. He said, I'm so glad I'm not the coach at Indiana oh, that's anymore. Right. <laughs> he, said, he said, that's a good look at Purdue team. That old Oak and Bucket game, forget it, Indiana. These guys are really <laughs> good. No We've had fun. Back upside to Mark and Bob in the booth, guys. All right, guys. Uh, Chris Lee, Kirk, maybe you guys can uh, jump aboard that Viper and uh, get a ride, get a good seat, and watch the second half. Joe Tiller, Bob Davies, said that he wanted to create an air of and an atmosphere of fun going on the road. This is the first of a critical stretch for them. Some big road games lie ahead for Purdue on their schedule. It'll be a lot more fun if they can keep playing this well offensively. Yeah, and I think fun for Joe Tillers, obviously, coming in here and throwing it 31 times in the first half. Kyle Orton, 82% completion for Wisconsin. It's all about getting the football. You know, Purdue with 47 plays. I think Wisconsin with 24 plays in the first half. Almost doubled the number of plays uh, uh, by Purdue. So Wisconsin has to get the football back, not fall any farther behind, and then line up and run the football and test Purdue. Purdue's defense has not been tested. Time until he got involved in this football game. Hebert hands it off to Anthony Davis, met by Nico Kudovides, the leader of that defense, if not with his performance, then certainly vocally. The Purdue defense all season long has been the backbone of this team. Second in rush defense, fifth in total defense, ranking nationally in several categories. And he is, it is laced with seniors that have been producing for four years now for Brock's back. All right, this is the first time Wisconsin's had the ball here in the second half. Back's lining up out of the eye. It's Bernstein, the fullback, and Davis. Anthony Davis. And a nice tackle by Stu Schweiger. Nice. Anthony Davis. And a nice tackle by Stu Schweiger. Not Anthony Davis. And a nice tackle by Stu Schweiger. Nothing in, lacerating in like a missile. The All-American senior, 6'3", making a nice stop. And Stuart Schweiger came into this game taking it personal because Jim Leonard last year was named Big Ten free safety on first-team all-conference. That's a great play right there, getting that safety involved in a run. But he bowed up a little bit when Jim Leonard's name came up, and he took it personal last year because Leonard was the first-team all-Big Ten pick. Second down and nine. Georgie completes it to Evans. Evans with a first down at midfield. Working on Jock Reeves. Evans with his 146th career reception. Climbing the charts. That time Brock Spack brought Stewart Swaggered on the strong safety blitz. Number nine right there going underneath Anthony Davis. Great shot on Jim Sorgi. But you come back with Lee Evans, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Jock Reeves, the curl route and the spin move gaining yards after the catch but great job of jim sorge standing in there against that strong safety blitz mark first down and 10 a 19 yard pickup and here's davis brought down immediately and then sorge kept it are they gonna rule a fumble they're gonna say that he's down and they're motioning to the sidelines looking at jim sorge Medical staff coming in to attend to Sorgi. Remember lap in the ball game now, Matt Schaefer, who came in last week with a heroic effort to win the game against Ohio State. Second down and six for Wisconsin. Schaefer going to wing it right away. And sacked back at the 47-yard line. I intoned about last week. It was incredible. Wisconsin now sees their starting quarterback, Jim Sorgi, go down. Matt Schaefer in the game. Third and seven, and he's sacked again, Bob. Back at the 48 by Landon Johnson. Let's go down for more on Sorgi from Holly Rowe. Kevin Castro, the defensive coordinator. Slant with the Purdue punt, driving Leonard all the way back to the 23. Jim Leonard took one back last week. Stopped up at the 47-yard line. Serious injury. He has been through the meat grinder here. Like all of his predecessors at Wisconsin, Shabert setting up the screen, tipped up, and knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Jolovic. But Mark, Shabert needs some help. Even points behind, but I mean, on third and 15, it's difficult to run, and it's because of the penalty on first down. Shabert under heat and sacked. Back at the 35, Sean Phillips. 
coming off of the edge and bringing some noise. Again, Wisconsin, a running team that has thrown when they want to. Now they have to throw when they have to. Sean Phillips again on the speed rush on Mike Lorenz. No contest mark, but Wisconsin throwing because they have to, not because they're throwing like they when they want to, like they have the last several weeks. Up at 45 yard, but both of these teams have been very prolific in the fourth quarter. Outscoring their opponents 54 to 17 and 82 28 respectively Purdue and Wisconsin I would think Barry Alvarez run this football twice because he knows he's going for it on fourth down Against the number two rush defense in the country They look to pass Bernstein out of the backfield wide open Bernstein Brought down just outside the 10 Once in a while, you got to throw him a bone. Wisconsin loves to run the power, the off-tackle play with the fullback kicking out in short yardage. Here they fake the power, run the fullback to the flat, and he looks like Willie Mays right here <laughs> with the over-the-shoulder catch. That's 275 biscuits, Mark, going down that sidelines right there. That really was a good call because I expected them to run the running the ball with a degree of success. Two tights, two wideouts, a single back, Anthony Davis, and he gets the call. Davis brought down at the seven-yard line by Schweigert and Pollard. And time until he got involved in this football game. Hebert hands it off to Anthony Davis, met by Nico Kudovides, the leader of that defense, if not with his performance, then certainly vocally. The Purdue defense all season long has been the backbone of this team. Second in rush defense, fifth in total defense, ranking nationally in several categories. And he is, it is laced with seniors that have been producing for four years now for Brock's back in this football game, Wisconsin driving. Davis with 90 yards on the ground. And trying to add to the total run here, coughed it up. And Purdue got the ball right into the arms, the wanting arms of Sean Phillips. <laughs> Anthony Davis with his second mishandling of the ball today. Unbelievable, Mark. But when you're injured, as he's been injured, you don't get to practice the way you practice when you're healthy. Gilbert Gardner dislodged that football, and Sean Phillips comes back and gets the recovery. But when you're injured, it's not just on game day. It affects Monday through Friday. How many opportunities do you get to carry the football in practice, Is Mark? there in Is it a first down and 10? Going up top. Has a man. It's complete to Ray Williams. What a grab. We just talked about Ray Williams has been missing in the plan of attack for Purdue. And right now, Mark, he makes a huge play down the field against man-to-man -man coverage. Again, Chucky Cowan turned around. That's one of those Willie Mays grabs. I'll grass, tell you what, that is tip it to yourself. Great, great play right there. Kyle Orton laid it right in the basket. And Ray, you talk about the hold, the operation of the field goal. But Ben Jones, if he makes it, expect that knock on the door if you're Joe Dillon. Well, he's three for three today, Bob. He's made his last nine. He scored the last nine Purdue points. And here is Darren Charles right here, I believe. He's going to get a running leap for the ball game. Ben Jones. And Purdue leads. There's a flag on the play. Flag on the play. Purdue leading by three. And they rough the kicker, Jones. With three seconds to go, the Purdue Boilermakers lead by a field goal. A great job by Kyle Smith right here. The backup safety of getting this ball down, Mark. It's a pretty high snap, but he gets it down, 
and gives Ben Jones the opportunity to square that thing up. There's the roughing the kicker penalty, but wow. And there's Charles trying to get up, along with Jim Leonard. Get a hand up there, trying to block it frantically, furiously, but Ben Jones, the better man today. Four Mark, for four. And if you're Purdue, you come in here and win a huge Big Ten football game. They go on the road again next week. If you're Wisconsin, difficult. Now Jim Sorgi is out with what it looks to be a pretty severe knee injury. But what a different emotion in this stadium than there was a week ago when they beat Ohio State. Time until he got involved in this football game. Hebert hands it off to Anthony Davis, met by Nico Kudovides, the leader of that defense, if not with his performance, then certainly vocally the Purdue defense all season long has been the backbone of this team. Second in rush defense, fifth in total defense, ranking nationally in several categories. And he is, it is laced with seniors that have been producing for four years now for Brock's back.